enough business. I'm not bullshitting you on this, right? Nobody knows that story. People are still living on, on certain perceptions of prejudice that restrict the, the, the possibility of investment. You know, and I remember I met with an Afro-American woman from the local foundation in Memphis. She wanted to take me to lunch after we went through the charrette and asked me what my perceptions were. That was a flattering thought, <laughs> really. Uh, and she was the, one of the first things she said to me, I got you guys in the Northeast, I know you're always talking about gentrification and all that. She goes, Soulsville ain't gentrifying. We need some investment. You know, and then we started talking about some of the, our cultural kinds of strategies and uh, a tremendous organization there called Community Lift that hosted me there, a uh, remarkable, remarkable organization uh, uh, that works there. So anyway, it's a complicated issue, but there's no way, no easy way of accomplishing things. How long have we been in this country and how long have these prejudices and lack of, lack of opportunity existed? I mean, but I think we have enough understanding, knowledge, and know-how, and I think there are best practices out there that can tell us how to do this, but we have to operate as a community. So when you say who, the gentleman in the back, the who is a big who. It's not a single person, although single visionary people are critical, right, and should be supported in their craziness. You know, a lot of times when people come to me and say, how do I do an AS20 in my community? What's the formula? I said, there's no formula. You've got to identify the people in your community whose vision that is. I, and, and circumstances and conditions are very different. So it's not going to be exactly like what we do, right? I said, but it might be the person that annoys the shit out of you. That's the one that shows up occasionally and speaks out loud and doesn't seem to respect the decorum of the event. It might be just that person. So don't look through that person anymore. Take them to coffee or her, right? <laughs> Yay. I don't know what we do now. We want more questions. We've got time. Because I'll handle anything. The more difficult, the better. It teaches me. It teaches me. Oh, thanks for being here. I just have a question about, in, especially in Bromo, we have market rate apartments coming up. And then we have local I see artists. that giant project around right. the corner. So, and then we also have local artists owning their own But space. there's also an affordable complex that That's was built, right, too, right? right? around the corner. Right. So when these developers are looking at artists as amenities, and the artists are looking at developers as something that's, you know, evil or whatever negative aspect, how do yep. you get you're trying to build a community for them to sit at the same table and work as partners? It's relationships. One of the, the most powerful and wealthiest developers of Providence, uh, and I will say his name. His name is Buck Chase, Cornish Associates in Providence, Rhode Island. He's been written about for a project he did in the Cape, but he's done a lot of development and helped to revive the downtown. When we first were in business together, I started, we started AS20 in 1985. He came online in the early 90s in terms of making investments in the downtown. We were this far apart. I don't exaggerate this. I actually remember, he'll deny it. So I'm just saying, you know. But we were sitting at a table. He said, you know, artists are not really property managers. Maybe what we should do is that we should create an entity that owns the properties, and then you guys uh, do what you do best, which is programming, right? I stood up at the table and said, over my dead body and walked out of the room, <laughs> right? Any assumption that we're not capable to be developers or that we don't have the ability to manage things or any of that bullshit is another prejudice, right? That's just naive, stupid, and right, right? Me and him, we go to the theater together, Space. right? But, but we, we've got become so close. I mean, I was laid up for two and a half months. I couldn't walk. And he was one of the people that came to my studio in my house to visit me. And, and, and for someone in his position to say to me, if there's anything you need, anything you need, you're asking me what I want. Let me see. Let me get my list. You know? No, but I didn't. I didn't need anything. But I couldn't believe the gesture and the courage of that gesture for someone of means like him to be able to do that. He, probably be, he would be phenomenally embarrassed by this right now that I'm calling him out this way. I probably shouldn't have mentioned his name, but... Uh, but we're, we're extremely close now. And you know what? He learned things, and I learned things. 
I think part of the responsibility for those of us that want to do it and want to do it right is we got to learn the language. We got to put up with the bullshit, right? We have to decode because resources, as you all know, particularly municipal resources, they move around over time. You know? Sometimes artists and art, arts organizations are going to the NEA. Sometimes they're going to the Department of Transportation, <laughs> which has a much bigger budget. <laughs> right? That's what Rocco tried to do at the NEA. He tried to steal from every department that had all, they had like money coming out their ears they didn't know what to do with. Right? Where, his, where the NEA is like a, doesn't even show up on a damn federal budget. Right? So where the hell was I? I